topic is Neanderthal behavior and environmental interactions in southern Italy, and I've taken a microstratigraphic approach. Um, I'm calling it, I thought I was going after Peter, so I was going to refer to Peter's slide, so we'll just go a little bit um, out of order. So just to give you a little bit of background on Neanderthal uh, research, um, Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans um, split off from a common ancestor. And about a quarter of a million years ago, Neanderthals were a highly specialized species living throughout Europe. Anatomically modern humans developed in Africa and they moved into the Middle East about 90 to 60,000 years ago. And my colleague Peter will be speaking about some, uh, some activity that he's been researching in around that area. About 45,000 years ago, anatomically modern humans began to move into Europe, and somewhere between 5 and 15,000 years ago, 5 and 15,000 years after that, Neanderthals suddenly disappeared from Europe. So the last holdouts were in uh, small areas of refugia. The last ones to become extinct were in Gibraltar, and that happened around 30,000 years ago. So what happened to the Neanderthals? There are three basic theories. Neanderthals evolved into modern humans. Well, there really was not enough time for that to happen. Um, the second theory is that Neanderthals interbred and hybridized with modern humans. Well, that was really on a very small scale and likely didn't happen in Europe. Um, as I'm sure you've all heard about DNA, uh, we, most of us have a little bit of Neanderthal DNA in us, uh, but uh, that really didn't happen on a large scale. So the third theory is that Neanderthals were outcompeted by humans. and. Uh, Humans had some type of uh, behavioral or physical advantage over Neanderthals. So what we're looking at is uh, in our excavation site in Osprosciutto uh, in Italy is some fire or combustion features. So what we're looking at is a possibility of different fire use between anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals and seeing if that was possibly one of the differences that, um, that led to modern humans being more successful. So why is hominid use of fire important? Well, cooking food allows more nutrition from the same food. So if you're going out and uh, collecting food, hunting, or gathering, uh, if you can get more nutrition from the same amount of energy expended, that's a definite advantage. Fires are also associated with complex social behavior. So ethnographically, we know that sitting around the fire allows social bonding. I'm sure we've all done this, where you have a, uh, a campfire, you have a, a pit that's dug, it's lined nicely with stones, people sit around, chit-chat, share stories. It's a very complex social behavior. Fire is also used for warmth and to ward out predators, so it can play a role in survival. And fire is also used for making and improving uh, weaponry. So specifically, our site, Osprosciutto in Genosa, Italy, uh, it is, um, as you can see here, located in southern Italy. And this is the rock shelter site. They began excavations in 2009. It's a, a limestone rock shelter that overlooks a ravine. And this is the profile of the excavation. You can see at the bottom there's a tephra layer. Um, the tephra, or volcanic ash, was dated to 55,000 years ago. And right at the top, we have a, the top of the excavation was dated to 43,000 years ago on bird bone. So our samples come from layer 11, so it's very close to the 55,000 year age. So when the excavators were excavating this layer, they noticed uh, some, what they believe were hearth features. Oops, sorry, don't okay. that, okay. Um, and uh, they noticed that there were these roughly circular areas that had some white, which they believe was ash, and some dark areas, which they believe were burnt sediments. And when they were excavating, they felt there was a difference between the sediment in the hearth feature and the surrounding sediment. And they, so they believed that this was a dug pit, and uh, they asked us to research this. So our research questions, are these features actually hearths? If so, are they intact? If so, what type of uh, activity surrounded them? So is there evidence of sophisticated fire-making activities such as digging of pits or curation of the hearths? So for example, uh, raking out of the ashes and then um, putting in more fuel and being reused over and over again. And also what kind of fuel was used? And is there any evidence of cooking? Okay, so the samples were taken from each of these putative hearths. Um, every, uh, you can see on the top, it, it uh, looks like there's an ash layer and a darkened layer. And what they've done is they've taken a sample that's a square block 
And uh, for each of the hearth features, a sample was taken. So these were embedded in resin. We do that in our lab. Um, embed the, the uh, samples in resin, and then they were mounted on slides. We looked at these under um, a petrographic microscope in both plain polarized and uh, cross-polarized light because different features have, um, show up differently under cross-polarized light. So our analysis so far, we have definite, uh, definitive evidence of burning activity with ash plant material. You can see in the top left, that's at 20 times magnification. We have charred plant material. We have burnt bone. You can see the little orange pieces are burnt bone. And we have degraded charcoal in a lot of the samples. So we uh, also have somewhat of a layering you can see at the bottom of this particular sample. It's darker and it's a little bit lighter on top. So there's somewhat of layering. We also found that the, uh, some of them were highly biotreated. We have uh, burrows uh, in, this, uh, in this sample. And uh, we also, for fuel, we mostly found wood charcoal. Um, there is very little evidence of grasses. I apologize, I missed this slide. We're looking for phytolus, which are silica deposits in plants. They, um, they, the silica deposits in the cells of the plants, and when they burn, uh, you can find these little silica uh, phytolus, and the, the specific shape of them can tell you what type of plant they came from. We haven't really found a, a lot of them. We're still looking for them. We also found that the bones are burned. Um, almost all the bones being charred just tells us that there's very little evidence for cooking because if you think about how, um, say, a joint of meat would be cooked, if you had a roast with a bone, you would cook the flesh, you wouldn't burn it. So the bone that's inside would not be burnt. It would remain unburned. You might get a little bit of charring on the edges, but all the small fragments of bone that we find are charred, so it doesn't show us a lot of evidence of cooking. Now that doesn't mean it wasn't there, we just haven't found uh, the evidence to show that. There's also no evidence of sophisticated uh, fire making activity, no evidence of digging pits, and no curation of the hearts. So you can see um, this thin section on the left hand side, this is not from our sample layer, but it shows a very clear delineation with the ash on the top and the sediment on the bottom. And uh, Oops, it didn't work. Okay. Uh, the lines didn't show up. But on the top is ash, and on the bottom is the sediment. And you can see the clear line. And then under the cross polarized light, on the bottom, all the white dots are grains of sand. So you can clearly see that it's a different type of sediment. There's a very distinct line. And this is what you'd see if there was a pit. So this is what we see in our sample. There's no distinct borders, so no borders, no evidence of pit. It means that there probably was not any hard preparation. This is at 10 times magnification, so even at higher magnification, you can see that it's very mixed. So our conclusion so far, the fuel was mostly wood, um, little grasses, as I said, we, we haven't seen the fight with, um, and uh, bone was not likely used as a fuel. There's no evidence of cooking, but as I said, that doesn't mean that it wasn't there, we just don't see it. And no sophisticated activity surrounding fire. So the majority of the comb combustion features were not um, prepared, just a heap of file fuel, excuse me, simply piled on the surface and burnt. So they were not used over a long period of time, they weren't raked out, you can clearly see that, uh, if, if that occurs, you can clearly see that in the slides. And uh, that possibly means that Neanderthals in this location could actually make fire, they didn't have to curate it. And what that means is that if you don't know how to make fire, you have to go and find fire, so from a lightning strike, a wildfire, or something like that. And when you get it, you want to keep it for a long period of time. So in some other places like Kibar Cave in the Middle East, you see huge piles of ash. They were likely curating that fire. We don't see this here, so it might mean that um, Neanderthals did have good control of fire. They simply lit a fire on the surface, used it for cooking, heat, whatever, um, and they didn't need to curate it. So the importance of this research, just to sum up, microstratigraphic analysis of the HARS has been able to provide evidence at a scale that's not possible when they're excavating. As I mentioned, the researchers felt like there was a difference in the sediment um, between the, uh, what they thought was a, a pit that was dug and the surrounding sediment. We're, it's not that they were wrong, they're very, um, <laughs> very experienced researchers, but we feel like the uh, ash that was inside, we see it's kind of brecciated, so there was likely some water that sat in, the, in amongst the ash and then hardened, and that gave it a, a bit of a different feel from the surrounding sediment. 
So by researching Neanderthal use of fire at the site, we're adding to the body of knowledge of Neanderthal behavior and contributing to the understanding of how Neanderthals came to be outcompeted by anatomically modern humans. And just a little bit of a thank you. Thank you to Dr. Francesco Berna for providing me with this project and a lot of guidance and their sponsors. Thank you very much.